Welcome back to the lunch table, food for thought. I'm Nico Blitz. Make sure you hit that subscribe button at the bottom left-hand corner. We're also on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, YouTube, and the beloved iHeartRadio app. Um, ever since I moved to L.A., I've just found so much natural talent, and everybody in the city just sounds so different from each other. Um, I remember listening to Kaz's Affected album uh, just last year, and there was this one record on it, and it had this feature who was singing. I think it was, the song was called Bout It or something. Um, so my guest, right, he has this album out called Normal. He has an EP out called The Lost Files. He was also featured on Janelle Maurice's latest album. And fun fact, he was also part of the Dreamville Sessions, man. Uh, you can hear his vocals on Oh Wow, dot, 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 serve. He goes by the name of Garen. What's poppin', bro? Yeah, what's the word, man? How you feeling? Yeah, I'm feeling great, bro. Um, you have a lot of accolades under your belt. I'm trying. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's pro- it steps to it, so yeah, it's a process. Well, the trippy part is that right before you walked in here, you said you didn't even have a manager and you're doing all this. Yeah, yeah, no manager. Um, 100%, you know, just grind, hustle, just brick by brick, day by day. No real machine, you know, outside of myself and just brainstorming with people that I trust as far as opinion goes um, right now. But, I, you know, I, you know, I'm just trying to build with the right people. So that choice is something that, that don't have to happen too often. Like, it's not just something I'm sporadic about. Yeah. When it comes to choosing people like that to just have in your business, in your corner, mm-hmm. stuff like that. So, yeah, I've been moving on my own, bro. Well, what tends to happen is that a lot of emerging artists look at what a lot of the successful artists have, right? So Mm -hmm. you look at, like, a J. Cole, right? And you see, like, okay, well, he has a manager, he has a label, he has everything down the list. So what ends up happening is that the emerging artist looks at it like, well, I need a manager, I need my own, you know, I need all of that. But what's cool about you is that you kind of look at everything and say, okay, let me see if I can do everything by myself first. And then when the time comes for a manager or whatever else, that's when I'm going to tackle that. Yeah, and apply myself to, you know, searching or seeking for that outlet when it comes to, you know, someone I can bring in. But, I mean, you know, it's it's really just something you got to take your time with. And just with experience, you'll know what type of energy you need in your space. So, you know, like, I'm not hasty about it. Mm -hmm. I'm not rushing it. I'm just, you know, just taking my time. So you seem like a very chill, laid-back dude. What kind of people do you keep around you? Uh, They pretty (laughs) laid-back. I mean, but, you know, I'm laid-back, you know, because I'm just, you know, I'm I'm chilling. I'm trying to vibe, you know, trying to, you know, understand the, the energy and everything. But... You know, I'm I, I do have excitement about myself and like <clears throat> excuse me, like just you know, like I, I got my you know, my, my ways, like I'm not just super mono or like nothing mm-hmm. like that. It's like just depending on the mood, you know what I mean? I feel like you was super chill, you feel me, you was cool yeah. and you know what I mean. If you was turned up, I'd probably be a little bit more amped, you know what I mean? It just, <laughs> it just depends, yeah. It, it depends yeah. on, you know, the environment and like who I'm, you know, in agreement with when it comes to that energy. Got you, bro. Yeah. I feel like a lot of us move that way anyway. Yeah, like yeah. you can't just be in bed all turned up. I mean, you can though. There's some people who be ended up doing stuff like no, that. No, for but, sure. You no, know. and I got friends like I don't. You know, I don't really judge people like that because I feel like everybody judges in a sense. Yeah. But I don't really judge people like too too much in a constant sense. But you know, I got friends that are super turned up a, hun- a lot of the time. <laughs> you know, what I mean, super loud a lot of time. Got friends that's super quiet. Maybe that don't really say much. Well, shoot, bro. Everybody yeah. at a lunch table is essentially different. That's what makes yeah, the lunch yeah. table so exactly. cool. Exactly. That's dope. That's you know, dope. I just have to do like a little plug for myself. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. yeah, that's why. You know, that's dope. Respect. So, so Garen, man, uh, South Central? Is yeah. that where you're from? Well, I'm from South Central, and I, and I, I also include Compton because I was born in South Central and, and grew up bouncing around from Compton to South Central, like, literally from, like, 0 to 18, so... Yeah. It's hard for me to, like, choose one. But, essentially, it's L.A. 
So, so South Central Compton, I, I include all that. Inglewood, all that stuff is included in L.A. to me. Yeah. But, I mean, if you from L.A., then you really have to start separating it. Where you from, like, you know what I mean? Bro, like, it, it wasn't until DJ Head and Chuck Dizzle started breaking down, like, the little yeah. sections of Los Angeles. And yeah. I'm just like, yo, like, being an outsider from here, I just thought L.A. was just yeah, it's LA. L.A. It is, though. It is. But when you're not... It give you a little bit more background of how a person is, how a person act, how a person talk, how a person think, just by knowing that small detail of where in LA you from, you you can you can identify a lot more things about a person just by knowing exactly where they're from. Mm-hmm. Like literally. So So then what is the generalization of people from South Central and the generalization of people from Compton? Uh Compton is is uh I would say Compton is a little bit more like rough around like rough around the edges. Like we I feel like in Compton it's it's like you know, the appearance and the different things that matter to people in like LA it just don't really register people in Compton like Compton is like you feel me like it's th- like it's real thuggish and like 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 some will say it ain't no swag to it and that's mm-hmm. not a diss to my city obviously I'm just saying like you just know like when you see a Compton like like somebody from Compton you feel me and then you know when you see somebody from LA like I don't know how to explain it cause I got both of those both of those in but, you, yeah, yeah. You feel me? But I just know, like, like I'll wear some Chucks with some Nike socks. Only like, <laughs> like only only people from Compton is like, yeah. Like people in LA will be like, what? Like you really have a lot of people in LA who will be like, what? You wear Chucks with Nike socks? You 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 dusty? You feel me? Yeah. Or you from Compton? Like well, that's not why dusty, you know you know, you know what's know, crazy is when I. I, when I first seen like YG like rock that type of clothing, I was just like, "Is that really a thing?" Yeah, like how YG wears Stacey Adams with, with the, with the flood. Yeah, know? yeah. Like I do the flood thing. I do it with like Vans and tennis shoes. Like I, 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 don't, I wouldn't do it the way YG do it, but YG from Compton too. So you feel me? Like it's just that little twist that everybody always. But you know, like that's some Compton type. Yeah. Like even if you look at Nipsey, like he did it a little differently when he would when he would rock the flood. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Everybody do it a little differently. Kendrick do it a little differently. He from Compton. Nipsey from South Central, though, so his come a little bit more. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. It's it's really like it's so thin of a line. Like you wouldn't be able to really tell if you just from the outside. It all look the same, but when you really when you really like been around these yeah, areas, you, you can tell the yeah, differentiating you, factors. Yeah, for sure. And you could tell sometimes you could tell by how somebody talking, like where they from. Yeah. Sometimes, like. I think the most LA thing that I own are a pair of Nike Cortezes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, I mean, shoot, uh, on top of that, it, it's the Kendrick Lamar Nike Cortezes. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, then you LA with that for sure. You know that that's me. That's me, the Bay Boy, just trying to blend in with LA just a little bit. Nah, man. I mean, shoot. Let me, what's one thing I can tell you to go, go, go on, and that'll make you LA? Um, go buy you some incense from South Central or something. Some incense? Yeah. You gotta give me like a specific. Go buy you play. some incense or, or 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 some jerseys off of like Florence or Florence and Crenshaw. You can find some jerseys and shirts for whatever sports going on. Whatever, whatever, it could be a soccer game. <laughs> you go in Florence and Crenshaw, like Florence, up and down Florence, and you're going to see a couple of people selling jerseys. Okay, for sure. And you can go down Crenshaw, right there on Crenshaw and Slauson, the homie. They, they be well, selling. shit, me and you got to take a right trip there over Manchester. there, bro, because I don't know where to go. Yeah, basically <laughs> anywhere in South Central on the main corner, like <clears throat> Normandy, Manchester, Western, <clears throat> Crenshaw, Florence. These are like main streets in South Central. Mm-hmm. You you hit any of those, you're going to find somebody like, what, what What are we in right now? I think the soccer just happened, right? Yeah, the soccer, soccer championship. Soccer and like baseball is going on right now. It's some soccer and baseball shirts somewhere in South Central being sold <laughs> for the low. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, you can That's stock up for the rest of the season. Yeah, exactly, for the, for the next season. So, since we're on the topic of sports, uh, what's your favorite sport? Uh, my favorite sport to play is 
football to watch is basketball. Okay. Yeah. You were you playing football during high school? Yeah, I played football. I, I had scholarships, go to college. All oh, that. word. Yeah, I didn't go though. Ah, uh, why? So, so my story will always be great because I got some nice highlights on 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 YouTube, and because I never went, you only gonna look at what I could have been and not what I actually am. So I'm 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 damn near the best. Damn. You know what I'm Wait, saying? what you play? <laughs> What um, I position? play quarterback. Oh shit! I'm man. the best, bro. I'm like Michael. I was the next Michael Vick. That never was gonna happen. We never gonna see. But so. wait, why did you not continue uh, with a scholarship or anything? Well, I love music, and I love my safety a lot more than I. Hey, f- you know hey look, man. Yeah. Football players got like five years, if that, bro. I'm cool, man. I want to feed my family and, and my next family and my next family and my next family and mm-hmm. all the families that I'm never gonna be able to see. I'm yeah. gonna feed all them. So then in high school, you were doing football and music at the same time. No, not really. I was, but I never told nobody or showed nobody. I was, I wasn't, uh, I wouldn't say shy, but I wasn't out there. Like, I played the drums. Yeah. I toured, like, all over the world in high school as a drummer. With who? Like, I did stuff with, like, Disney Channel stuff with, like, Miley Cyrus. Or, oh, that's yeah. crazy. Like, that stuff before, like, that I'll never, like, it'll never matter. Yeah. And I mean, it, it matters in my own, like, head, but, like, you know what I mean? Like, but, I mean, that's really so cool, So, what I'm bro. trying to do, it, it's just kind of, like, something that's just, that just happened. I, I did jazz tours, like, yeah. Cuba, Barcelona, Spain, like, Madrid, wow. all, all type of places. How did you even latch yourself on to tours like that? Uh, Well, I was with this... Guy named Fernando Pullum, he like a legend. He okay. like a jazz legend. He was a teacher at the school called View Park on Slauson and Crenshaw. I, that's the reason why I even went to that school. Mm-hmm. Because my cousin, Nick Smith, was playing the drums. They went to Brazil the year before I got there. I was in eighth grade. He going to Brazil. I'm like, hot what? Like He went to Brazil <laughs> for like a whole month. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I want to go out the country. He like, yo, we touring every year. We touring every year. Jazz band. Yeah. All you got to do is learn how to read music. So I enrolled in that school. I got in. It was a long waiting list, but I ain't had to wait for nothing because he he found out that I did like the Disney Channel Miley Cyrus. So he was already like, okay, we're gonna get you in. Yeah, he was like, yeah, you yeah, legit. Yeah, yeah, boom. He got me in. Then through that, I was able to get my brother in through myself being in, and and then basically like I was just going on tour every year, like Cuba, Barcelona, wow. Madrid. Like, was this like Brazil. during the school year, or, like over? Summertime? Yeah, during school year. Oh, we wow. never was in school, and like he had us. Playing at like the Playboy Jazz Festival, playing for Bill Cosby like private <laughs> yeah. parties, and we was doing all type of That's crazy sick. stuff as high school students. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it wasn't nothing illegal, of course, but it was just it was very privileged, and I'm grateful to be in certain rooms. You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't met Usher and all type of people that will never remember. I met them be, because I was just a little drummer, a part of the jazz band yeah. that was just in the room. You know what I'm saying? I was just the ambiance in that room at that particular time, but. Where were you when you first uh, were in a room with Usher? The Getty, the Getty. It was a lot of people. It was like, uh, it was like Usher, Jackson Brown, uh, uh, like Aretha Franklin, Bill Cosby. Ooh. Like it was, a, it was a lot of people that Damn, you man. Like it was like Legends. it was overwhelming. Don Cheadle. It was, it was overwhelming. It was overwhelming. And but how old were you at this time? I was like fourteen. Wow, man. And I and I knew who like you know I knew Don Cheeto or like a Usher like oh I know that well I, obviously I knew Usher but like a Don Cheeto I was you know he just talking to us we in a green room like crazy green room I mean like the Getty Center is like I don't know if you ever been there it's a museum so yeah they gave us a green room that was like way too big for like fifteen <laughs> people it was like super <laughs> huge with like food everywhere yeah. Don Cheeto just amongst us, you know what I'm saying? And I'm thinking to myself how familiar he looked, you know, and then, he, you know, my teacher was like, oh, it's Don Cheeto. I'm like, I don't know who Don Cheeto is. I just, you know, it sound familiar. I feel like I and heard this before. And your teacher looking at you like. You know, but I didn't say, you know, I, you know, I'm a professional, so I always made it feel like mm-hmm. it was Like it was familiar. a big thing, yeah. Like, Don Cheeto, yeah, Don Cheeto, oh, Don Cheeto. That's my guy. Yeah, but nah, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't know who he was. I had to go and Google him. And, dang, that's Don Cheeto. Like, dang, that's Don Cheeto. Like, uh-huh. You know what I mean? But these are the people that I was put around like early. And then on top of that, before that, I mean, my cousins are legends. You know what I'm saying? Like, my, my family is legends. I got an auntie who then taught us and, you know, gave us a lot of game and wisdom mm-hmm. when it comes to, like, the business and just, you yep. know, musicianship and, like, 
artistry and just. So your auntie and like a whole bunch of your family was in the music industry too. Mm, I wouldn't even say industry it was in music. And industry, my cousin Brody Brown, who produced like all of Twenty Four Karat Magic by Bruno. Whoa! And he that's like Ill. he did like a lot of different things in life. He's like a legend. <laughs> you know what I mean? But he put us in the industry for real. Mm-hmm. As far as just that same vein that we came from with our auntie and and, and those before us who who kind of got us started on music, the business, my cousin Brody put got us in you, the business. Got you know what I'm saying? Where it was yeah. like, like my auntie had us, we was, sign, we was doing publishing, we had publishing company, I had publishing company when I was eight. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I produced and wrote my first song at eight years old, so she had us there and we, we just didn't yeah. know. But like actually knowing like, yo, I am in the business, I just signed a deal, I just got this and received this and now these benefits come with this. I was 17, you know, about to wow, graduate bro. high school, and my cousin, like, put me in the game. You know That's what I'm crazy. Having such a musically inclined family and also having your cousin who was really deep into the music industry, yeah. too, it just seems like you were in such a perfect situation to yeah. thrive in music. Yeah, God, God had his hands around me. I mean, us as a family, I believe, but, you know, I think it's still a work in progress, you know what I mean? Like... It wasn't easy, and even my cousin Brody, he he went through a lot, and I can say a lot from what he's revealed to me, and he don't even reveal that much. Hmm. So for me to know it's been a lot from what I can see and from what he's revealed to me, just imagine the things he ain't told he he haven't told me. I he, mean, uh, so you know like, mean? what have you learned from your cousin that uh, you are willing to share? Just diligence and consistency, and like after this, I'm going to a video shoot with Two Chains and him. <laughs> like they shooting a video for a single called Fast Lane that um, he put out already, but he didn't even press about it. it. wasn't like It wasn't like he's chasing fame or chasing number one or chasing a billboard. He just creating. So he diligent, you know what I mean. He stick to the code. Like he don't. Break, fold, bend, lie. He don't. He don't really like change himself for nobody. You yeah. could be. You could be anybody in that room. You could be the the biggest artist or the smallest artist. He gonna always treat you the accordingly. Same. Like if you treat him with respect, he got respect for you. If you if you don't care about the creation, neither does he. Like, mm. and it's not in a bad way. It's just like you know what I'm saying. You, a lot of people can't get him in the room for less than a hundred thousand dollars. You know what I'm saying? That's so crazy. for me to be able to be in the room with him and it's it's nothing, you know. You know. What yeah, I mean? you soak up as much game as you can, of and then course. just to keep on applying. I'm a sponge it. forever, anyways. Even if I become, even when I become, <clears throat> you know that that guy, that I'm, I'm gonna always be a sponge. Like you, you can never learn too much. Hey, you catch it though. He said when, not if. For sure, when <laughs> yeah, for sure when I, I I work too hard to say if anymore yeah. if don't exist no more yeah when I set my mind to it it's always a win and the diligence and the consistency is really what can put somebody in a position to win yeah. um because just seeing as how the difference between your first album and the EP that you have out right now like there's a lot of consistency with your sound. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like you haven't changed that up. Yeah. So, like, where do you really, like, capture your sound from? Hmm. Where do I capture it from? It's a lot of places. It's a lot of different places. I mean, literally from listening to other artists, like peers, like people who I'm sparring with now, like the rappers and the singers and the other underground and local artists and the the person with 2,000 followers who nobody knows but who's really super dope. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm paying attention to a lot. So, I mean, it's many places. But who I'm directly sparring with on a day-to-day basis is my cousin Brody mm. for like the past like eight, nine months. And that's been like super crazy. I've been writing his album with him. Um, he's been 
producing records on my album. You know what I mean? I got I probably got about a million dollars worth of records right now from Brody Fuck. in the last just two weeks. You know what I mean? Just a million dollars of just walking in a room. That's how many times I've been, you know, in the last two weeks. That's how many songs we made. So I've been super locked in with him. Yeah. I've been locked in with this dude named Ye Ali too, if I don't know if you ever yeah, heard Yeah, yeah, I've him. heard of Ye Ali. You should get him on here if you haven't. Yeah, for It'll sure. It'll be dope. Yeah, Ali, this is just the uh, yeah. manifestation yeah, that I'm yeah, going to yeah. have you on this. Yeah, yeah, for <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah, Ali, I've been working with 24 Hours. Mm-hmm. Uh, you ever heard of 24 yeah, Hours? Yeah. yeah, he's super dope. That dude right there has been real. He's been holding it down as far as word, you know, in this industry, word is super thin. So his word has been very, like, you know. Like oh, yeah, he's been around, man. Real. He actually... Uh, I don't know if you ever heard of Brown Boy Maj, but then, yeah. um, so he's bootleg Kev's artist, oh, yeah. and then he had 24 hours on his debut album, and I'm like, cool, it's it's really cool to see, like, somebody like 24 hours who's been in this industry for such a long-ass time work with an emerging artist like Brown Boy Maj. To me, it bridges the idea that, like, again, it doesn't matter if you have, let's say, 2,000 followers, and you're, like, all the way up here on, like, some g- ungodly number, like, a million followers, like... There's, like, a mutual thing when you meet somebody who is on, like, the same creative level as you or somebody that you see potential in. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm such an artist. I'm such a creator. I don't really pay attention to the um, antics Mm -hmm. of why the world follows this person or why the world don't follow this person. Yeah. For that same matter, you know (laughs) what I mean? So, I mean, I just kind of, like, do my own analysis and just go with it i go with my heart go with my gut i don't really think too hard about he say she say Mm -hmm. i do consider it because sometimes the world will tell you the real even though they over exaggerated or whatever however it comes sometimes it'll be real like yo yo your shoes are really ugly bro like like, yeah it was an extra way to say it take the cortezes off bro yeah like bro them are really ugly you know what i mean but they hating on you though like yeah. They're not ugly in general. They just ugly the way you wearing them. Or you know what I mean? Like it's always you always got to read between the lines bro. when the world speak. But sometimes the world really be right on the nail. Like boom, bro. So I like to wear my pants like hella baggy, right? Like mm-hmm. sometimes my pants will eat my shoe. Mm-hmm. So then when, once I first put on the Cortezes and I put on like my regular pair of jeans, which eat my shoe, I'm looking at my shit like sometimes yeah, it works. Ain't it, bro, sometimes, sometimes it works. Depending on how you wear, you know, depending. Your shirt got to be baggy, too, though. Uh, yeah. If you're going to do baggy, it's got to be baggy all the way. If you're going to do fitted, it's got to be fitted all the way. Like, everything you do, it's got to be all the way. <laughs> so you can't be half baggy, half fitted. You're going to look, you're gonna look yeah. silly. You're going to look crazy. That, that's when you take somebody's word of advice, like, yo, like your outfit right yeah, now, yeah, it's looking banging. silly. <laughs> you know, sometimes I probably get in the way when I'm dressing. My homeboys will say something crazy, like, yo, yo, G, like, like, why you got on that jacket? Like, take the jacket off. Yeah. Or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, just be like, nah, I'm feeling this jacket. You know what yeah, I mean? I'm like, feeling it today, it, bro. But, I mean, I'll probably get in the car and take the jacket off. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, you know what? Part of me is just like, yeah, whatever. It's all good. No, nah, I listen a lot. I just, I just, I don't know. Sometimes I be in my ways. When, I, when I'm already putting my mind to something, I'll be like, oh, nah. Oh matter. yeah. Yeah. I mean that that's a good way to go about things because I think a lot of the greatest people can are are open minded, you know what I mean? It's like you can really stick to your ways but you still have to take outside factors into consideration Definitely. because you know you could literally be like running yourself into a wall and not even yeah, knowing not that even, it's a wall. Right. No, for sure. I'm not too stubborn. I mean, I think everyone has to have a certain amount of stubbornness to get a vision of across but mm-hmm. I'm not too stubborn where it's like if something clearly makes sense to me I'm going to take heat yeah you know what I mean you know well especially living in Los Angeles where everyone wants to be in right like there's just sharks coming from like it's crazy Texas I mean. New York everybody bro so it's like you and know they, and they and they doing it too mm-hmm. so you know kudos to them from all of those places but yeah, it is a shark tank out here. Bro, and it's like, how, how do you feel knowing that, like, you live in the city where damn near everybody wants to be, and it's like, you're not only competing with the people who are around you, or, you know, even your cousin, but you're also competing with, like, 
people from all around the world. Yeah. Um, I don't really pay attention to it. I don't really see it because I operate on a higher field, a higher realm than just the physical. Mm-hmm. So, of course, I physically see it and it's tangible to me, but I don't think I should care nor I want to care. Mm-hmm about what anyone else's agenda is if it doesn't coincide with mine. Now, if you ask for my help or if I feel like I can help you, then of course I care about what your agenda is, whether it coincides with mine or not, because I'm serving. So in in the hmm. in the world of me serving, then I'm open. But in the world of me per, pursuing and chasing in 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 meeting my manifestation at its corner, you know what I'm saying? I don't care who or where you came from because I'm not even, like, physical with it. I'm all, Hmm. like, spiritual. Like, it's all... It's what I'm supposed to be doing. So I can't care about where you come from and what you're trying to do and where you're trying to go and none of that. Whether you... J. Cole, Jay Z, Kendrick Lamar, Trey Songz, whoever way up there. You know what I mean? If I say I'm dropping on this day, I'm dropping on this day. <laughs> like, that's just what that's I'm doing. That's how do. you do it, bro. Yeah, yeah. That's how you do it. 100%. Did you grow up uh, with church in yeah, your life? All the way. You know what it was? Because you said, because I'm serving. And I was like, not that many people say that. Oh, yeah. You got to, you got to, you know. A good leader is just a great server. That's it. <laughs> That's it. You feel yeah. me? He's just somebody who knows how to serve all their teammates. Period. Um, not too many people use it because not too many people tapped in, tapped in with what this world really about mm-hmm. and what this being is about, what being actually means. I mean, human oh. being is to be. You feel me? It's not hmm. to think. It's not to. It's not human think. It's not. It's not human. Human goers. It's not human. Overthinkers. It's not human. Followers. It's human beings. You have to be. For me. Got to be. It's like I kind of get you, but then like. It's deep, huh? It is deep. I don't like being too deep. Because <laughs> <laughs> sometimes they're really just. Yeah, it no, it's just it's just it's just, it's just too much at one time, but <laughs> but it's like a lot of people see the reality of a situation. Okay. All right, let's just get an example. I'll tell you this. Shoot. So, for example, some might be happening to you, right? Might be bad. Some might some bad might be happening to you. And I struggle with this a lot too. So it's not like I'm telling you like I'm just so above this because I'm not. I'm a human. I struggle with these things too. We'll be in a problem that's going bad. Nothing's going our way. You feel me? We might not like something. We got an attitude. We bothered. We bothered by the fact of what we actually seeing right now. You know what I mean? Like we're not. We're not bothered by the fact that we know that this is gonna be over. So it's it's more beneficial to just like oh. just go through it and just be in the moment instead of like trying to like pursue the next or pursue like like or or think about the past to justify why this moment is so uncomfortable Got like you. it's it's like we always looking for everything outside of like right what's now what's actually like happening what's actually right happening now. Yeah. you know what I'm saying and with with learning how to like be involved in what's happening we also have to learn how to have a balance of not being involved of what's happening too because then you you, you it's just going like you just kind of caught in the trance like now you're just somebody who just passing by yeah so you still have to have control knowing that what's happening bad ain't going to necessarily be everything of the future like just because it's it's bad now that don't mean the future going to be bad yeah, but exactly. also just because it's bad now that don't mean you have to start chasing all these different outlets or trying to figure out oh oh like identify something with the past or try to go to the future and say like oh my gosh the future's gonna be so bad because what's happening now it's like 
you got to just find that balance, you know what I'm saying? And, and to me, that's what a human being is. Like, it's being in the moment. Yeah. Being in the moment. And sometimes the human in you going to think ahead. Sometimes the human in you going to try to identify with the past. But as long as you find a way to be in that moment, at some <laughs> point, you know what I'm saying? At some yes. point, you know what I mean? Like, I know that probably was a lot. But it, it, at some point, you find a way to be in that moment, like, things would be a little bit more smoother. Well, and I'm it. learning that. I love it, though, because, see, I'm the type of person who a lot of people told me I'm a lot more spontaneous with things. I don't necessarily, I don't think of, like, the next day or, like, mm-hmm. the next week, whatever, which in itself is also a good and a bad thing, right? But I've found that, like, I find a lot of my peace just through the spontaneity and through just, like, going day by day. And if something's wrong with myself right now, I I tend to think to myself, like, well, what is it that's really bothering me right now? And how how can I tackle that, like, head on, like, at this moment? Because God knows there's so many things we have to do in our daily lives that, like, if you keep something just tucked in the back of your pocket, it's going to distract you from being great. Yeah. It's going to distract you from the potential of the the next. Mm Mm-hmm. 100%. 100%. I mean, that that's that's why it goes back to what I'm saying, just basically, like, finding that balance and, and actually being a human, you know what I'm saying? Being Amen a human. that, bro. Yeah, yeah, Yo, bro. Yeah. I love that. See, you, you get a little bit deep, bro. A little bit. <laughs> I, I mean, I, 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 I can always do it because it's just natural to me, but yeah, I don't really like to because then it just get a little, like too deep sometimes yeah sometimes you can get too deep where you just you just don't even know where you're at like yeah you, just you like, dug the what? whole way too yeah, deep bro like, but now you were good so um let let's get out of the hole really yeah, yeah, quick yeah, bro so um so you uh you end up not taking your football scholarship and you're touring like in brazil and whatnot um you end up moving to new york right yep i moved to new york in 2015 that was way well after Four years, three and a half, four years after uh, I signed the uh, publishing deal mm-hmm. with Warner, Warner Brothers, Warner Chapel. Damn. Yeah. How'd you even get that? My cousin Brody. Man, yeah. shout, shout out to your cousin, man. <laughs> Look, I'm just going to assume all answers is your cousin Brody. <laughs> I mean, almost. I mean, unless it's God. Yeah. You know what I mean? As far as the, the, the other sense of it, but as far as the physical realm of actually getting in a room and and spiritual is my cousin. Yeah. You know what I mean? For sure. Getting in these rooms, getting in front of these these people who have a certain amount of power to be able to change your life fast. Yeah. So then you're in New York. Are you just creating music the entire time you're out there? Yeah, building relationships, creating music. Was at Atlantic, was at Warner every day, like just grinding, going to 50th and Broadway. I think that was the streets. Or Fifty First and Broadway, something yeah. like that. It's in time. It's basically in Times Square, though. But I was going there every day to work, spending the night, two days a week, doing all type of crazy stuff that even the people in the offices don't know I was doing. You know what I mean? What were you doing? Like spending the night, waking up, working, going home, coming back the next day, like stuff like that. Like just doing stuff that wasn't really authorized, but I was grinding, I was hustling, I yeah. was just trying to. I was just a kid from L.A. who just didn't want to be in L.A. no more. So I was willing to do whatever. Mm. I wasn't the average New York person in New York who'd like, oh, this New York, you know what I mean? I was, I was seeing everything for something whole, totally different. Like, dang, like, so you tell me if I take this train, I'm going to get all the way to downtown with, with $2 instead of taking a lift for $17? What? <laughs> I'm going to get yeah. on the train. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have... Partners who was like, nah, man, I'm, I'm cool on that train stuff, man. It'd be too many this and too many that. I don't see none of that. I'm yeah, from nah. LA, you feel me? I'm just like, 125th, all the crackhead, all the, all the dope things, all them on 125th. You know what I mean? And Lexington, 125th, 2nd Ave, 120, all them. 125th is like Bro. a dope fiend island, you know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. Like, you know, like, I didn't care though. I'm just uh, 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 pushing through them. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, you just have to like make it work. Because yeah. in San Francisco, bro, like, I would take the bus all the time and there would be like crackheads and like, you know, fucking drug addicts on the bus and shit. And like, sometimes when initially when I'm on, like, it kind of phased me. But then the more and more you see it, it's kind of just like, well, 
It never now this is just me. regular life. Yeah, it never phased me. I mean, because that stuff is out here, too. Mm-hmm. It's just like 125th in New York is like a row. It's like, you know what I mean? Just like an endless amount of people like that. Yeah, like, I mean, like, there's been times, like, literally, like, three days in a row, I've seen the same dude over those, like, three days in a row on my way to the train station. Like, same dude, same spot. Like, dang. And then it should be like, you'd you be walking any given time, be like eight, nine, ten people just laid out the same way, like, like just, you feel me, bent. Yeah. Off of some spice or whatever, whatever they own. But 125th ain't no no joke, though, you feel me? But the way people from there would tell me, like, be careful, da, 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 I ain't see it that way. I was just, I was just grinding, hustle. I wasn't paying attention to nothing, you know well, yeah, I mean? because Nothing the moment- didn't seem like danger to me. I was just like, oh, I'm from L.A., I'm... I know what dangerous is, and this don't feel dangerous. Like this don't feel, and that and that and that. <clears throat> that is the wrong mindset to have, in certain cases, in a lot of cases. Why? Especially in the hood, because I was living in East Harlem, which is, it's not the worst, but it ain't the best. It's the hood for sure. You know what I mean? I was right down the street from uh, forgot forgot the projects, Wagner, Wagner. They call okay. it Wagner, and that's like. That's some deep projects out there, Wagner projects, and they was in between. They was in a, a war with these other projects, like on one tenth or something like that. But I was I was involved in the culture to know like what was going on around me. But at the same time, I was super oblivious. You know what I mean? And that's kind of not the right mindset to have, especially being from LA. You know what I mean? Just going and knowing you in the hood. But I I just didn't care, man. And I was one man, and I felt like God had my back, which He did. So I I, I just was like I was damn near invincible. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. When it came to walking or going anywhere, I didn't care where I was going. I'm, I'm going. If that's where the studio at, if that's where... I was hitting the train to Queens by myself from Shit. East Harlem, you feel me? Like, deep in Queens. Like, man, I was doing all type of stuff. Well, because the moment you stop... You must have had something in your head in which, like, the moment you stop is the moment you have to go back to L.A. Yeah, I had nothing to lose. And I had to pay rent. Three days after I got out there, I was on the bike. I was delivering to the World Trade Center, all type of stuff, going to 70-something floor for the World Trade. Well, well, you couldn't go up that high, but I was going to, like, the certain floor where you can go to drop off the food. Like, mm-hmm. I was doing all type of stuff, delivering. To, I was I was driving from, you feel me, Brooklyn. I was driving across the bridge for, sometimes, bro. Shit. Yeah, I only did, like, twice or three times, but sometimes I had to drive across the bridge to get some food for, for a nigga or whoever it was, a lady. Whoever, damn, bro. Yeah, hey, bro. And that's all just, some... to, and that's all just to keep yourself over there. And that was all, yeah. Wow. That was all just for the experience of like I ain't trying to be in L.A. And I was out there for a year and I thugged it out. How come you weren't trying to be in L.A.? Well, it was two things. I was just overwhelmed with the streets at that moment. Like I was in L.A. And this dude got killed from this gang, this Crip gang, and they did this thing called 100 Days, 100 Nights. Yeah. I don't know if you ever heard yeah. of that. Yeah, Head told me about that. Yeah, and basically, like, I was on Western in Manchester, and, like, this this dude got, like, popped in the head, like, after they announced it, you feel me? So I was just kind of, like, tripping out, like, like, that's not the reason I left, but that was just, like, I was already thinking about it, and then, then when that happened and I seen all that, and I'm just like, all right. You feel me? I'm good. You feel me? I was right there off a of dinker, like when it happened. So it was like everybody started getting shut down. The streets, like, you feel me? We got blocked off. We couldn't even drive this place. We couldn't hit the corner. We couldn't go on the block where my homeboy stayed. It was just a lot. And I was just like, man, I'm already thinking about moving to New York. My little brother was out there too. So it was a lot of different things that was like already pointing. He was experimenting with his manager. Um, and they was in New York. He was already out there. He moved there like a month before me. Like, yo, bro, come out here, bro. I got a room. We can just share a room. Like, forget it, bro. All you got to do is just pay. You know what I'm saying? Rent money, $1,000. But when we we live in Manhattan. But, you know, it was still the hood, but it was Manhattan. It was nothing like our hood. So it was yeah. like, it's better than what you're going to ever get in L.A. right now at this moment. You feel me? And then, you feel me? Right after that, I get on my phone. It's a shoot. No, Manchester and Western. You feel me? It was just like, it just kind of like, just was like, and then like, I'm yeah. like, oh yeah, I'm about to leave. I'm out of here. There was just like a lot of different factors that told you like, yo, get out of here. Yeah. I'm like, I'm gone. 
They're talking about 100 days, 100 nights. I didn't think it was going to be serious, and it wasn't that serious. It probably was only, like, 14 days of them just, like, really, like, gunning, gunning niggas down, but... Which is still a lot, <laughs> but, you, yeah. the, but the fact that I can just see it as regular, like, oh, they only they they didn't kill people for hundred days, only fourteen. Feel me, like that's yeah, a problem. Yeah, it means you're you actually yeah. like like you've seen some yeah. shit go down. So it's like it was just a lot, you know. what I mean, obviously, I could have stayed through that. I've been through that a lot of times. Mm-hmm. Like niggas die every day. Not not to not to be you know neglectful to it, but niggas die every day in L.A. Mm-hmm. So so then you're in New York for about a year. What urges you to move back to LA. I felt like I expressed everything I could out of New York. Like I took everything out of New York. Um I took everything, man. I was doing all type of stuff. I didn't I was I mean I didn't link with Jada Kiss. I didn't link with <laughs> all type of like I was with Justice League a lot out there in New York. Uh Rook from Justice League. Um I was in cool with the fray because the same dude I was like like uh dealing with he was like the A and R. He did all the records I love, like so I was like getting in good with that that whole camp. Um I don't know, I felt like I was just it was just just like I felt like it would be start it started to become a hub. Like you kind of just like you kinda just like acquired everything that you needed over there in New York. In that moment, cause yeah. New York's so big and so much going on, you can't really acquire everything. But um, in that moment, I felt like, okay, it's time for me to try to go apply these things that I've accumulated in this year to L.A. and to being a, a, a nigga from L.A. And not, and I'm not about to be from New York. I'm not about to be sitting in New York. I'm not about to be chilling in New York. <laughs> and then do you release your album Normal while you're in L.A.? Yeah, I released it while I was in LA, but after New York, I moved to Atlanta to record the album. Oh wow! Well, it's a it's an EP. I'm working on the album right now called The New Normal. That's the album. The New Normal. Mm-hmm. That's gonna be like the debut album. Yep. Got you, bro. Yeah. So then you record the first Normal, the 2018 Normal. You're in the first ATL. person I told that I'm dropping this album. Hey, bro. So I'm gonna make that a it. clip, by the way. Man. <laughs> cool. Make it. I'm with it. So the new normal, um, when I was listening to normal, right, and I think you also made like a little mini documentary about this, and it's the last song, and it pertains to a conversation that you had with your dad, right? Yeah. So I want to ask, before we get into the new album, right, like, what's your current relationship like with your dad? Because for those who didn't watch the video, you're basically asking your dad, who was incarcerated for a long time, uh, like why he would choose the streets over being with his family. Yeah. Um, we cool. I be seeing him. I be pulling up on him. He still do his thing, though, you know what I mean? That the streets is him and he's the streets. It don't matter who you are. You ain't about to separate him from the streets. And I, and I don't mean that in a negative way. That's just real. So, uh, that's my pops, you feel me? Mm-hmm. I, I ride with him. I ride for him. You feel me? I ain't going to ever uh, denounce him. Ever. Like, that's, that's just my pops. You feel me? He made mistakes in his life, and that's that's okay. It is what it is. I ain't tripping. Yeah. Especially now. I ain't tripping. I, I can see I, that. I my own responsibilities as a man. Thank you for having me. You feel me? That's how I, that's how I look at it. I'm, I'm more grateful that I'm able to be here because of him. All his mistakes, I could, I, could, I could easily make up for that. I could easily do my thing and show how his mistakes benefited me. Because one may see the mistakes as, oh my gosh, you show such a great, a, a horrible example. Or the same, you know what I mean? It's half empty, half full. Them same mistakes could be the greatest example Damn. as well as the worst example, you feel me? Damn. It's really on you. Shit. As the as a consumer, I'm just a consumer who don't think pessimistic about everything. I'm I'm more op- optimistic. So congratulations to my father for showing me what not to do. You feel me? Mm-hmm. It's simple. And there you go, bro. Getting deep one more time. Yeah, I'm always I'm always <laughs> tied I'm always tied to something. You feel me? But he knows this. You feel me? He yeah. knows this. Like if my dad 
if my dad, if I tried to be a gangbanger, if I tried to go start putting on the set or doing this or doing that or no matter if I was from his set, whatever set, he, he going he gonna to be on me. Like, mm-hmm. man, it's you you ain't on this, man. Yeah. You better go somewhere, go sing. Yeah. You better go somewhere and go play football or you better... You better think of something. You better go get a job. Mm-hmm. You ain't about to be on. You ain't about to be on this. Yeah, you better sing a note. Sing a note. Up. <laughs> so, you know, he, he's aware. He's. It's not like. It's not like I don't talk to him. I talk to him every, every couple of weeks, every few weeks. Check in with him. Pull up on him. That's good, man. I'm happy you guys have a way to uh, keep your relationship yeah. moving forward. Yeah. Um. So me. And I really wanted to ask you this because I'm a huge Dreamville fan, bro. Yeah. When do you get the news that you're going to be at these Return of the Dreamers 3 sessions? Yeah, Revenge of the Dreamers. Revenge um, of the Dreamers. Damn, see, I already fucked that up. Yeah, that was... <laughs> man, you good. That was in January when they did the sessions. And... Uh, I found out in January, like... I found out. I found out late, cause I I went. They was here for ten days. I went the last three. Oh wow! So I'm grateful to make that. The well, you couldn't make like the first week. Yeah, I was. I don't know what I was doing. I don't even know what I was doing, but I couldn't. Yeah, I was busting some moves out here, but I couldn't shoot video. I don't remember. Yeah, but it just didn't work out. But I, I figured it out. Got there the last. Um, the last three days, and still end up making an album, and and the, and the record <laughs> I made, yeah, yeah, that was a blessing. So then you laid some vocals over. Oh wow, sir. Yeah. So Shmino, Jid, Guap Dad, and Buddy were all in the booth. I was actually in the booth with them, but I was just kind of trying to figure it out. You know what I mean? I didn't know Shmino. I didn't know Jid. I knew Guap Dad and I knew Buddy. But I was just trying to figure it out, like, what's going on, what's going on? And they was laying this, and I'm just listening, like, dang, like, this is crazy. And then they left out the booth. Well, I left out the booth before they they was done. Then they got out the booth, and I, I went right in the booth, right after them, and just like, yo, hey, record me. I told the engineer, yo, record me. I didn't even know this song was going to be all that, you know what I yeah. mean? Not saying that it sucked or I didn't think nothing of it. I just didn't know. I was just... You just did what came natural what to came you. came natural, you feel me? I'm just like, whatever. I'm like, record me, boom. As soon as I walk out the booth, cold walk in, you feel me? And they like, oh, yeah. So I don't know if it was somebody texting niggas, like, yo, when it's something hot, they just knew to tell this nigga come in or yeah. whatever, but you feel me? I'm not saying he walked in because I was laying the vocals. I'm just saying that it just was perfect timing that he walked in right after I got done. And he heard it, and he was just, like, making a face, like, yo. Then when he heard the vocals, he was like, who is this? You know, I had to, like... You know, it was me. I don't like... I don't like... <laughs> yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't like boasting, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not boastful, like, and I'm not the I'm not the guy. But I knew, like, yeah, I know this smooth, nigga. I know yeah. this smooth. You feel me? And you, it, and this ain't no sample. And even though it feel like one, it ain't one. You feel me? This is real life, which is gonna be a sample one day and, and thirty years from now mm-hmm. when the next nigga. You feel me? But I had to just, you feel me? Like, yeah, that's me, nigga. But regardless, it wasn't even like he pointed me out. He just, he just was like. You feel For me? Sure. Like, respect. Yeah. And I just seen him, like, just just, just mouth watching, like, put this to the side for me. He told the engineer, like, hey, put this to the side for me. Mm-hmm. And you know, I, I didn't know if that was a floss or whatever, but it wasn't a floss because that, that, that record is on there. And yeah. I didn't know it was on there until after the fact. And then, um, so what was the environment like for you for those three days? Man, no sleep. Um, a lot of running around from room to room to room. It was like amazing there. They shut down a whole studio compound. I'm talking about where the biggest Atlanta artists that you could think of have recorded and shut down and put they, you know, put their album heart and soul into. They locked down every single mm-hmm. room. I'm talking about however many square feet was just us. So you 
you had people, it was a hallway connector, people were setting up studios, you feel me? It was like, you was walking in a maze, you yeah. feel me? And you couldn't find Cole. He was always in a room, you was just, you just wasn't going to find. Every day I discovered a new room. How about that? <laughs> now, were you, were you creating music every single day? Yeah. I mean, you create music every single hour, it's a new song you own, depending on how you move. I had to learn the last day to just stay in one place for like half of for the day. For hell long, and yeah. And then stay in another place for like half so of as the soon day. As you, I can only imagine as soon as you get up, somebody else is just rushing in there, huh? And everybody else is bringing their vibes everywhere. So if everybody is everybody just playing Sims, you ever seen that game? You ever played that yeah. game? Yeah. If everybody it was just, like that. Yeah, bro. <laughs> it was just, everybody just, impeach, go eat, shh. I'm back in the studio. Everything was just back, 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 back to the studio, back to the lab, back to this room, this room, this room. So it's like you, you better off just staying here because the song gonna change every hour anyway. Yeah. So you better off just being on twenty songs within this one room that came out this one room. How many songs do you think that you cranked out that during those three days? How many songs I was a part of? Probably like fifteen. But how many verses I did? Probably like seven, eight. How many hooks Damn. I did? Probably like ten. That's, like that. that's a lot, bro. Yeah, In but three you, days. But you got people like Guap Dad and Buddy, and I, I don't know about. Wait, I heard Guap Dad much. did like thirty songs or yeah, something. I legit seen Guap lay like twenty five verses like myself just just in three days. Like, yeah. I mean, like, he'll lay the verse one. He won't even hear. It. He just go to the next room, lay his verse. Don't even hear that one. Go to the next room, and then when they play it back, it's just like, oh damn. That's how it looks like. It's really on all these, you know what I mean? But, you know, they got a different savage in them. They, like, mm-hmm. they didn't care. I was trying to warm up. They was they was seven days in. They was savage mode. They was like... Yeah, they were just like, we got to crank everything They was just tearing up, now. like, the dead <laughs> horse that's been dead already. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, well, we got to eat the dead horse. Like, they been and ate the real food. You feel yeah. Me? I was Who, just coming to get the crumbs. Who's somebody that you work with during those sessions that... Mm, that I guess you got that you felt like real chemistry with, like somebody new that you hadn't worked with before. Mm. It's this producer named Business Boy. I really was able to connect with him. Um, and then I was I was connecting with Boz a little bit. But those are two that I can name. Van Jess, these mm-hmm. these, these girls named Van Jess. Oh, Van Jess is dope. Yeah, I yeah, was connecting yeah. with them a lot. I built a really great relationship with them. So does that mean Van Jess on the on the new album, New Normal? They're they not there, but Van Jess, we gotta get some in. Tell them, yeah, let them know for sure. I, I, I got I some can. people who know Van Jess. Yeah, even no, I know them too. Well, shit, I, you I'm already just, know yeah, them, just, so it's like shit. You know, I just gotta make sure people know who they are. Van Jess, mm-hmm. yeah, Van Jess, they hard, they dope. Man. Shit, any records with Boz? We do got one on there, but I, I mean, I don't, I don't remember how I go. One, two, uh, I don't think it's ever gonna come out. But I do have a record with Boz that I did with me, Boz, Buddy, Guap Dad, and Kaz. Oh, shit. Yeah. Ah, I want to hear that one so badly. All right, Lennox is pretty cool, too. She's super dope. Yeah. Her process is very different, and she does not chase any moment. She let all her moments come. Oh, and wow. Yeah, she she chases. Me. That's a whole different beast. That's a vibe, yeah. You know, everybody was in there mostly chasing moments. She was like... Her like Omen, like Earth Gang, like Dreamville is super dope because they're not like a real like like a boy. You know how like a boy band like they all kind of the same, like, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. They're all different. They're different, bro. Yeah. It's crazy. Well, that's why the craziest is... thing was I remember when Cole first signed Kaz, I was just like, "Yo, this is hella different." Yeah, because Kaz rapped like none of them. Yeah, exactly. That is true, and Kaz is from the city. That's my boy. How do you... So, uh, how do you know Kaz? Uh, through my homies. I mean, Kaz is a city... He, he's a city boy, so, I mean... I probably didn't met him and ran into him so many times in our childhood, but we just didn't know type mm-hmm. of thing. But uh, mutual friends, like, 
his producers is my homeboys, and he ended up being signed to J. Cole, and you know what I mean? Just people I know that went to this school that was my rival school and football. It's just, it's just a lot of different avenues. Yeah. It wasn't but, just like one particular yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, It was a lot of different people who was telling Kaz about me and me about Kaz. And I met him at his house. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's hella normal, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It wasn't even like I met him at an event. Like, you from L.A.? No, I was at his house, pulled yeah. up on him, all that. And through his producers and you feel me? That day, I got on some <clears throat> records. That day, I uh, I got on some record that was supposed to be on his album, and it didn't make it. And then I randomly pulled up to him at Interscope, where he actually introduced me into Schoolboy Q. Oh, wow. But um, I pulled up on him at Interscope, and uh, yeah, that's what we did about it. Randomly. I did that verse in like 30 minutes, just because he was like, I don't know what to do. And I just was like... I don't want to keep him waiting just in case he do figure out what he want to do. Yeah, and then the I'm shit made the album. Yeah, you feel me? <laughs> just like with the whole J. Cole thing, I just did it real quick. Boom. Let me just go Ladies Harmonies. I don't know. Yeah. Every time, I'm, I, every time I'm just like in that mode, something work. Ain't that a bitch, man? Like you could like, you know what I mean? Like, because I'm saying people can try so hard to try to make a song, but when it just comes naturally and you're just not really thinking of it is when... It's, something can become something, you know? That's life. You just got to let it happen. You got to remember, like, going back to what I said, you got to just be. You got to mm-hmm. just be. Can't think. Can't try. If anybody's going to take anything from this entire podcast, it's really just you got to be. Yeah, you got to be. You got to be. Yeah. So, Garen, man, new normal. When can we expect that project to come out? I don't even want to tell you. Okay. Um, I appreciate you telling me the name of the project, though. Yeah. I accidentally told you that, so I had to just <laughs> stick with it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I don't even know when it's coming out because I want to put my best foot forward. Mm-hmm. So this year for sure. Okay. Yeah. But I'm not in a rush. You know, I'm trying to be like Ari or Earth Gang or Jid or like the, like J. Cole. Or like the, him too. He was like that too. Just not, not forcing it. Mm-hmm. I want to like just let it. I want the moment to, to approach the, me. Yeah. You feel me? That's what's up, man. So new normal dropping this year. Garen, where can everybody find you, bro? Oh, on Instagram, you can find me at Garen G A R R E N. On Twitter, at Garen Official G A R R E N Official. Uh, SoundCloud, Garen. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. You find me on Apple <laughs> Music. <laughs> just type find in Garen, yeah, yeah, bro. Just, just, just type in Garen, man. And if you hear some real music that's talking about some real shit, then you, then you found me. Yeah. That. And also, don't confuse him with the white guy that might Garen show up Sean, on yeah. yeah. Don't confuse him with Garen Sean, Shout out bro. to Garen Sean, who always, <laughs> who always, like, being confused with me. Shout out to Garen Sean. This Maybe we should just do a song together, like make it easy, bro. You should <laughs> hey, put that shit on the new album, <laughs> yo. Because I said it, I, I need my five percent. Anyways, right. this is the lunch table, <laughs> food for thought. I'm Nico Blitz, Garen, and we are out. Everybody, shout out Nico. Yay. Yeah.